Hello, welcome to Organic Acting. I'm Chris Conway and this is Stanislavski Method. Do we need it to be believable? So in this video, I am going to recap Stanislavski, a little bit of his history, and kind of evaluate his system, whether we need it, and maybe give you some alternatives if you are not too keen about simply becoming a Stanislavskian naturalistic actor. So Konstantin Stanislavski was an actor, director, theatre practitioner, who in the late 19th century took a look at the acting world around him and realised that everything was based on melodrama. Everything was based on how much you could show your acting technique, how angry you could get, how upset you could get, and it was more about showing off on stage than it was about being believable or experiencing. Oh, oh, why would you say such a thing? Oh, oh just, just I'm so upset. I'm so, so upset right now. Did you see the tears? See the tears with the sting of my eyes. <gasps> so Stanislavski said there had to be a better way of doing this. This is why he created his system. He created his psycho technique, which was a whole way of beginning to understand the character and the character's past life, their motivations, and then moving on to physicality, the method of physical action, how to physically create a character. Stanislavski was all about experiencing, about bringing truth to a role and, and living a part um, as much as you were able. You were still the actor, but you were able to um, organically experience what the character was experiencing rather than just learning some empty lines and getting on a stage and pretending and you know pretending to be so angry you could actually live a role and naturalistically experience which brings us to the question do we need Stanislavski's techniques to be believable no nope. I would say whatever works use whatever works if you don't want to become engrossed in all these stuffy techniques then don't use them use whatever works for you and helps you to become a better actor um, Stanislavski actually said that his system wasn't a cookbook that you shouldn't just take recipes from it that you should follow it from the beginning to the end I believe you can Pick whatever you like, you know? If you like a little bit of this from Stanislavski, but you're not a big fan of that, then leave that <laughs> alone. Use whatever works. If you find something from any practitioner you find intriguing or you find success with, then use it. And I guess this is what this video is all about. I'm trying to give you some bedrock alternatives to Stanislavski's system. Simple go-tos that you can use which um, although Stanislavski did cover these, they're not quintessentially Stanislavskian. These are bedrock techniques, as I say, that you can refer to and use. So the first thing I would say to you is be truthful. Believe in what is happening. If you watch kids at play, they believe completely in their characters. They believe if they are the cop, if they are the robber, uh, they believe what they are playing. So in your work, believe in what is happening in that moment. Believe in the given circumstances. Believe in the scene. Um, block out the audience. The audience aren't there. This should just be a, a fourth wall, okay? So just believe in what you're doing. Bring truth to what you're doing. If you don't, then what's the point? You know, you aren't there to play up to an audience. This isn't melodrama. You are there in a scene without an audience there, with a fourth wall there. So believe in the, in the moments. Believe in the interactions with the other characters. Believe in the drama. The next one is listen and respond. So you might have heard that acting is reacting. You converse him with me. You converse him with me. You should always be listening and responding, not just waiting for your line. If you go and watch any television program or go and watch your favorite film, 
you will see that the the edit, the cuts in each scene, uh, when it flips to each actor, will nine times out of ten cut to the reaction from the other character. So one person will be speaking and then it will cut to the other person waiting for their reaction. This is a big part of acting. It's about responding, not acting in a bubble, but being alive, being organic, responding, listening. Acting is reacting. It's not just about speaking. Moving on, do you know what your character wants? So let's forget the whole Stanislavski idea of objectives and character motivation, but do you know what your character wants and why they are there in that scene? There must be a reason. There must be a reason why they are even occupying that space or speaking to the other characters. There must be something that they want. And do you understand that? Can you play that? Um, don't just, as I say, learn lines and just say them parrot fashion. There's got to be an emphasis, a reason behind the lines, a reason behind the actions, a reason why your character moves from the left side of the stage or set to the right side, a reason why they go over and take a drink from a glass. Think about what your character wants and why they are there. Now we have empathy and sympathy. So with empathy, can you put yourself in your character's shoes? Even if you don't agree with your character, maybe your character is the worst person in the world, can you put yourself in their shoes? Can you at least understand why they are doing the things they are doing, why they are saying the things they are saying? That is a really important thing with acting. Empathy, being able to empathize with other human beings, even though they might be from a completely different walk of life, can you step in their shoes and empathize with them? And then we have sympathy. Is there something about your character's plight or what your character wants that you completely sympathize with, that you say, yes, yeah, that is exactly how I think, how I feel? something that I have experienced in the past, you know, something I experienced is similar to what is happening right there in the script. That is your point of sympathy. Again, we're getting away from just putting on this cold mask and saying these lines that you've learned from the script. You are empathizing, you are sympathizing. Don't forget the technical elements. So learning your cues, hitting marks, knowing when your character reveals the, 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 the gun he has in his pocket. All of the technical things you should learn until they are a part of you and you, then you can completely forget about them, that you don't need to worry about them anymore. Learning the technical side of things is incredibly important, um, but don't let it get in the way of everything else that you're trying to do. Learn to let it go once you've learned it. I hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful. If you did, leave me a comment, like, subscribe, I will get back to you. I've been Chris Conway, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.